Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a video on these Anderson Power Pull connectors. And the reason I want to do a video on these is because if you're like me and you are trying to use either a solar panel that has the Anderson Power Pull or a Goal Zero or a Jackery or any of these um, <clears throat> battery banks or whatever you want to call them, um, they all seem to now come with an Anderson power pull, whether it's for the input or the output or, or both. Um, and I wanted to make my own connectors so that I could connect various uh, uh, things up to it. And I wasn't sure like what to order. You know, when you look at these, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't have a part number. It, you just don't know. And there wasn't any great videos out there that kind of explained what to get. So that's what the purpose of this video is, and I'll do my best to explain. Uh, and I'll also show you, I'm not actually going to crimp one of these, but I'll show you how they kind of connect to each other. Because you might be wondering, you say, well, that's an up and down configuration, and that's a side to side configuration. How in the world does that work? Uh, but they interlock on each other, and I'm going to kind of show you that, or hope to show you that in this video as well. But before I get into that, I want to just point out, if you're going to get these, you want to go and do a Google search or, or a search on the internet, and just type in Anderson Power Pole Connectors, and you're going to get a lot of various hits. And what we're looking for is <clears throat> the 15, 30, or 45 amp connector. And why I say that is because all three of those use the same exact dimensions on the connector. So you see this little plastic uh, I don't know, rectangle here. You're going to notice that whether I buy the 15 amp version, the 30 amp version, or the 45 amp, this part here is exactly the same. What is different is this part here. Now, put that against black so you can see it a little easier. This is the connector that you crimp that actually goes inside of that part right there. So, and what's different about them is they're rated for a different amps that they can handle. So the 15 amp is a obviously a smaller connector and it's rated for a smaller gauge wire. And it'll tell you on the 15 amp which kind of wire gauge. I believe off the top of my head it's somewhere around a 20, 22 gauge wire. And I bought here, this is a 30 amp is what I bought. And the 30 amp will go from 12 gauge to, I don't know, 16 gauge wire. So it's a little thick of, a thicker of a wire that it can handle. And you'll also know that this opening is a little bigger. Now I did try to put a 10 gauge wire in there and it just didn't work. Uh, most, of the, most of the wire will go in, but there's a lot of strands that just won't fit in there because it's not, um, the circumference is just not uh, wide enough for the wire. So these, this connector is rated for 12 gauge. Um, yeah, 12 gauge to 16 gauge, I believe. So if I wanted a bigger wire, I would have to get the 45 amp version, which will allow a 10 gauge wire. So that's the mystery behind these that, that I uncovered. There really is no mystery. Um, the hardest part for me to wrap my brain around is, well, what exactly, what connector would fit in there? And you also have to be very careful if you're wiring a solar panel that has the Anderson connector and you want to mate up to it, you know, that, that's kind of what I made this, this here for. Now, disregard the double fuse. I know I don't need a double fuse, but this was the only 12 gauge wire I had. I did label one side black, one side red, and obviously up here, one side black, one side red. Now, um, one thing I want to point out is these things slide, they, they kind of slide on each other. And I don't know, if, I'll try to get up close, if you can see that little groove right there. So these things have um, almost like a male end of the groove and a female end of the groove. And they're meant to kind of lock into each other. And by what, what I mean by that is you can see right here, I have it in a side-by-side -side configuration right now. And all I have to do is just un, you know, slide it and I can take it apart and then I could put it in a, um, a, an over 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 connector like this I can make it work this way so that if I needed to plug into you know ones that go up and down I can just reconfigure it so it makes it real easy you have to be really careful though when you're connecting 
to be mindful of your positives and negatives. They are reconfigurable, but um, you have, if you're doing a solar panel, you have to be really mindful of which side is your positive on your solar panel and which side is your negative, and you have to make sure you are going into the appropriate positive and negative on your um, uh, PWM or MPPD controller, depending on what you have and what Anderson connections you have there, because you don't want to run um, the wrong connectors in because you would risk, uh, hopefully you had a fuse on it, um, and the fuse would blow and you wouldn't really harm anything. But that's the only thing I would be cautious of is, is just be mindful of the positive and negatives of all the, the devices that you're connecting, whether it be a solar panel, whether it be you know some kind of device that I'm going to connect into here. And um, you know I just need to be very careful that I got positives and negatives correctly. So uh, the, the connector is... You know, I actually was going to crimp one, but I don't need to, to crimp one right now. But it, it's very similar um, to crimping other kind of cables. They do say you need a special crimper for this. Uh, and you probably do to get the tightest connection, but I don't have a special crimper. I just use my old uh, trusty crimpers. These things I bought at a garage sale, I think, for $2. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit rusty. But um, it does have a nice, uh, If you, I don't know if you can, it might not be clear. It does have a nice little crimper uh, on the end to, to get it really tight. Um, so what you would do is you would just kind of just put the, you know, when you're crimping it, you just put it in there and then squeeze, kind of just squeeze that when you had that, that metal part in there and here. And then you would put this, um, this clips right inside here. And the way that works is that metal side down so as long as you, you look at that, you have the metal side you put down, and then I'm just trying to show you here without, so you put the metal, and then once you crimp this, you have this, this end here going down, and then that will kind of just slide in and it clicks in. Once you get in there so far, it'll click in. So that's how to, to crimp it. Um, again, this is not a crimping video, uh, and I only have one hand available as I'm holding this camera, so I, I really wouldn't be able to do that. but. Um, yeah, that's really it. So I was a little intimidated at first by, you know, which one to buy. You know, am I going to buy the wrong one? Um, you know, I was I was worried, really worried about how in the world these things work. And uh, there's no surprise to them. Like I said, it's really just type in Anderson PowerPool connectors. Try to buy the ones made the um, real ones there are a lot of fake ones for all i know these these could be fake for all i know but it does say made in the usa right there and i think los angeles california who knows it's just a sticker um but they appear to plug in very nicely um they seem to be staying very nicely and what i was going to do was just show you hopefully i can do this with one hand um just kind of show you what's coming out of my the cigarette port. So it really should be close to 11.5. That's what the Yeti has, uh, the Goal Zero has. And uh, I'm just now gonna just take the connectors here and I'm gonna hook uh, black up to black and uh, red up to red. Now that I've got them gripped pretty tight, you'll see my multimeter has 11.57 and the Goal Zero has 11.5. So, uh, and again, this is kind of dangerous leaving these two wires exposed in the event that they'll hit each other, but it should trip the fuse if that was the case. And remember, if you have something like I have here and you, you fuse your outlet, you want to make sure whatever your end device is that you have the appropriate fuse in there. So this is a 12 gauge wire, uh, the outlet 120 watts. Um, so this outlet's 120 watts that it'll put out. So um, whatever end device I was using, I would put an appropriate fuse in for that. But uh, again, I hope this video has helped some of you and kind of demystify what these um, Anderson power points were on your power bank. And uh, you know, maybe it'll get you to go out there and now try to figure out what you can connect and use either for the input or for the output, okay?